Hello everyone, welcome to the Communication of Success. I'm Mishkat and I'm here to help you communicate better. Today we have a very important question before us, before us all. The question is, how can we hold the police department accountable? Before I go and answer this question, I'd like for us all to uh, examine the problem one more time. Here is the person and this is their first encounter with the police here in the US. This is the police forces. They have their training in law enforcement. The person does not. The police forces have their experience as a law enforcement officers. The person does not. They have their equipment, the person does not. They have the law and the authority behind them, the person does not. The police forces have their qualified immunity, meaning they cannot be sued. It's very difficult, nearly impossible to sue them, the person does not. The police de department has many personnel, so many people versus one person. Of course, the person may have his or her family, but they are not trained in law and enforcement. You see, so basically we don't have checks and balances. We don't have checks and balances. You have that huge tower against that little cubicle here. So what can we do about this situation? What options do we have as a community to foster better communication? When someone is talking, it doesn't mean that the other side is hearing them. There is a huge difference between talking and communication. Communication means that your voice, your opinion, is heard. Simply talking, it means someone is uttering words. Doesn't mean that these words are heard. So what can we do? There are many things that can be done. The first thing is to invest in this one cubicle here, to invest in the community having a voice in the police performance. Basically, we will establish something called civilian board oversight. Any case of shooting or using force would go to the civilian board oversight. Now here I want you to be a little bit careful in how to design this board. Uh, basically, the governor, the mayor, can design and put in place that board. So you don't have to go to the national level and enact a policy to do that. The board should have the power to subpoena the officer involved. Without that power, the board, as powerful as it may be, it cannot ask the police officer to come and answer some questions that they have. So they have to have this power. The second thing, you have to abide by their findings. So the uh, sheriff department or the chief of police cannot, cannot disregard their findings. The findings are to be abided by. In a way, the board will serve as the trainer for the police forces because it will review their actions and it will review their performance, basically directing them to the way they want them, the board want them to communicate and to perform with the community. All it takes is basically for any government governor to issue the um, policy stating that from now on every uh, use of force case, uh, every shooting will involve a review from the board, the civilian 
Review Board. The Civilian Review Board can be uh, summoned or can be established just like any jury. So you would call on people, preferably from the city where the action took place. Why? Because you want to foster communication. You want the police department of that city to listen to what the citizens of that city are saying about their services and their performance. You can complain against a police officer, but you will be complaining to their supervisor. So it's up to the supervisor to decide what to do. The ultimate decision will stay with the supervisor, not with the people. What the Board of Civilian Oversight does is return the power to the people, which is basically what you want to do to hold the police accountable. So it's only the police forces talking to themselves. We need them to talk to the community and engage with them in a conversation. That's the missing piece. Even if you train the police forces, it doesn't mean that they will implement that training. So there is a huge difference between training and implementation. These are two different parts. But you need to invest here. You need to invest in the community and allowing them to offer feedback to the police forces. This way you can hold them accountable. Think about it this way. There is another way to look at this thing. Students offer feedback to their teachers. They rate them. And the rating goes back to evaluate the teacher performance. The uh, clients of an attorney offer feedback to their uh, lawyers. And basically, you are allowed to rate the lawyer's performance. You also offer feedback to your doctor, to your physician. You can rate them. And the rating goes to uh, evaluate their performance. So each profession has the recipient, the person who receives that uh, service as a rater. They can rate the performance. Without that in there, without that additional um, communication piece, you, the department or the person offering the service is talking to himself or to herself. So there is no growth. The same problems will keep occurring again and again because there is no communication. The communications lines are cut, right? Now, this is the first entry. So, encountering the police forces is the first entry of a citizen to deal with the justice system, right? Let's say the case decide, the police department decided to escalate and bring the case to the uh, prosecutor. Let's take a look at what will happen to our uh, visual aid here. So, this is still... Uh, you know, the situation, you can see the imbalance. Now, the prosecutor who has the authority to prosecute, to put someone away or take their freedom, take their money, they have that authority. Of course, they depend upon the police forces to provide the evidence, the report, whatever they need. But still, you are putting a very powerful tool on top of this tower, which is the prosecutor. It's true, you can put one here. You can say, well, uh, the defendant can go with the public defender or can hire their own lawyers. That is true. Keep in mind, the public defender's office is limited in resources. You have abundance of resources here. The defendant, the person here, has to pay for his lawyer. If you want a good attorney to represent you, you have to pay a lot of money. Here, they don't pay anything. 
even with that, even with paying the attorney a lot of money, the attorney can investigate, which would cause you more money or not. You see, so you are already at a disadvantaged position here. What can we do about that? Well, you can equip the public defender's office. You can make them more powerful. How? And before you tell me about costing money or resources, many of the resources can be provided for free. For example, you can uh, announce a program as a governor, as a mayor, uh, as the city council, that volunteers will be recruited to help the public defender investigate any crime, any allegation of a crime that involves people of colors, minority, women, any group you want to protect. And basically, you will have people volunteering to provide you with information. And in return, you can, especially if the freedom uh, later on is secured or the case is won, you can offer them an expedited uh, certification to becoming private investigators. So basically, you are helping the community, you are getting them involved, you are not paying for anything. You can establish a fund where private investigators will be paid by the city to help out with cases where people of color, minority, women are involved. You have to protect those who are targeted or those who cannot defend themselves. You cannot say, well, I'm providing the public defender's office and I'm, that's it. I'm doing a great job. In reality, you are not doing a great job. See the difference? Look at the towers here. Moreover, the prosecutor can order the police forces to investigate further, can ask them for more evidence. The public defender cannot. He, she will rely on whatever information provided by the police. So you have to create balances. You have to create checks and balances. And there are many options that do not involve money. So one way is to create the program of volunteers who will come and help the public defender in exchange for an expedite process to becoming private investigators. You can create a fund for the experienced uh, investigators to come in and use or apply uh, to help out in a case that involves minority people of color and they will be paid from that fund. After all, we have lots of programs. Adding one will not be a big deal. The other thing that we can do is basically to take away one tip here, which is the qualified immunity. Everyone understand that in any profession, you should have some sort of immunity to be able to practice your job. For example, an attorney cannot be sued for something he, she said, uh, in the court of law, inside uh, the court in a case. Let's say they question someone a, a little bit aggressively. That person cannot sue them because they were in pursuant of the truth, they were defending their client and so on. Of course, they can be sued outside the court, which is totally different story. So they have some sort of immunity, so to speak. But to offer the police forces qualified immunity, which makes it very difficult to hold them accountable, that is a little bit uh, over the edge, so to speak. What can we do about that? What can we do about that little piece here? You can offer them immunity. However, like any other profession, you can hold them accountable to malpractice. If a citizen has evidence, 
that the police committed malpractice, they can be sued in this scenario. Of course, this would require having uh, changes in the policy, meaning you have to go um, probably to Congress to get it done. Nevertheless, it's an option available for you. I hope uh, this presentation uh, helped to see things differently. I hope this presentation would foster better communication between the police and the communities they serve. Uh, if you like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm here to explore and help you see that communication can help you succeed in the workplace, uh, in your community, and in the world. Thank you for watching. See you next time.